Good morning, folks. We've got a bit of space weather to discuss. We'll peek in on seismicity. There's a cool story about one of the watery worlds in our solar system. There's a poor paper I'm going to shred on the climate. And we've got the solar storm model from the Starlink loss. The last 24 hours on our star was actually a bit quieter than the X-ray emission would have us believe. There were a few impulsive M-class flares and one long-duration flare, but it will not be of any consequence to geomagnetic conditions. At the start of the day, UTC, a long-duration blast erupted from the southern departing group bottom right. The eruption is heading out 90 degrees away from the Earth. Meanwhile. The big sunspots facing the Earth have morphed in such a way that it is diminishing the magnetic complexity. It is still technically beta gamma delta magnetic class, but half of the delta region is now gone as the leading umbra converged and squeezed out the opposite polarity. We'll keep watching that one today. Anyone catch this weird quake off the Florida coast two days ago? That's a strange place for a seismic event, and that's about all I have to say about that one. The top earthquake of the last 24 hours was a 6.1 that struck offshore near the Kermadec Islands of New Zealand. Luckily, no significant hazards with that one. Up next, we're going out to Saturn's moon Mimas. It is one of the several moons with an ocean, and now they are saying this ocean is relatively new in astronomical time scales. They believe it is less than 25 million years old. They give that upper age range, but not the lower. And either way, it is a weird twist on one of the water worlds in our solar system. Up next, propaganda calls. They are investigating the high temperature spikes from September of last year, and while they do acknowledge that the sun played a role, they minimize it in the most shoddy and gaslighting way, eventually blaming human emissions. First of all, by saying that solar forcing is in CMIP6, they are being totally disingenuous. About 3% of the true solar forcing is in that model, and they know it, meaning that the sun had an even greater impact than their models are telling them. Then, at the end of the paragraph, they say that, well, also, the solar cycle may have ramped up more quickly than the model anticipated. May? This is not something you need to guess. Red line was the anticipation, and the black line, the actual data. Everyone in this field has been discussing the rapid rise of the sunspot cycle, which happened to surge in the 60 days leading up to those temperature spikes on Earth. These are propaganda clowns. Now, last but not least, Folks, this is the official supercomputer model for the February 2022 Starlink solar storm when 38 satellites were lost due to the impact of the geomagnetic disruption on the atmosphere and the satellites. While it is beautiful and amazing to see how they model these events, we still have to face the reality that it was only a level 1 storm, KP5. Folks, the solar impact was weak, the geomagnetic disruption was modest at best, and yet its impact on the upper atmosphere was profound. This is not some mystery. In 2015, we first declared that solar activity, weaker than expected, was having a stronger than expected impact on the Earth due to the weakening of Earth's magnetic field in the ongoing geomagnetic excursion and magnetic pole shift. And this was just another example of that. There is no way that solar storm should have done anything at all to those satellites. And the fact that we've had to report on similar, unexpected storm conditions several times since then is a bleak reminder of exactly what is happening to this planet and it's getting worse. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.